boys and girls, and welcome to the final week of our half term. Hope you had a really good weekend. Very cold, wasn't it, um, on Sunday? And I think we're going to be heading for a cold week. But plenty of warmth here at Orford because we have lots of things to look forward to. You'll hear a bit more about those in a moment. First of all, though, an update on our house points because you've been working very hard over the past week, gaining lots of house points. And Mrs. Marshall Walker will bring you up to date now with the current state of play with regard to our house points. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this week's house points. So last week saw Breeden just ahead on one point. What's happened this week? Let's have a look at the scores on the doors. In fourth place, we have Clint on nine points. In third place, Kimva on 13. Oh, who's going to pick the post in first place? Breeden, you're on 14. Have Malvern managed to do it? Well done, Malvern. Just by one point, you've squeezed ahead there. Excellent. I have some activity badges to give out as well now. Well done to these guys for getting their badges. Nathan, you've got your English badge. George has got his science. Year 5 have been working hard on their music badges and Charlotte, James and Henry and Florence have all got theirs. Harriet and Amelia have got their times tables badges. And George has also got 10 badges now, which means that he has two stars. Well done, George. So thank you to Mrs Marshall Walker for bringing us up to date. Now we have a musical performance. Always nice to start our week with a bit of music. Isabella is going to be performing for us. Hi, today I'm going to be playing Goldfish Bowl by Catherine and Hugh College. <laughs> Thank you very much to Isabella for that piece of music. I've got lots of pieces of music ahead for future assemblies, but please, if you've recorded a piece of music recently and you want to include it in assembly, send it through to me. Now, we had a very busy week last week. Lots of things took place during the week. It was really good to see a number of events taking place, a number of lessons taking place that involved you at home and the children at school doing pretty much the same thing. Uh, for example, Great to see children engaging in dance lessons and enjoying those dance lessons, whether you are at home or at school. But in particular, I really enjoyed on Friday taking part or joining um, our year two children in a cookery lesson. Uh, Mrs. Ace was involved and the year two teachers as well. And it was fantastic to see our children at home and at school doing pretty much the same thing. Uh, we've got a video for you now. Uh, so you can see exactly what took place in the lesson and there's a very special version of KH Radio after this assembly at which you will hear a bit more about this lesson. <music> Thank you. 
a fantastic lesson that and a bit more about that in our special KH Radio in a moment. Now I think it's time for some jokes. Two from Elsa, one from Rosie. What do caveman children do after school? Clubs! What do planets sing? Neptunes! Hi Mr Turner, I'm going to tell you a joke. Why does a giraffe... Why does a giraffe have a long neck? I don't know, why does a giraffe have a long neck? Because its feet stink. <laughs> well, thank you girls for those jokes. Brilliant. If you would like to have your joke featured in assembly, all you have to do is to record it, send it through to me, and I would be delighted to receive it and feature it in one of our future assemblies. Now, we had a school council meeting last week, and the boys and girls who went to the school council meeting, well done to them, um, they spoke about lots of things. One of the things they said they found very confusing was coronavirus, or COVID-19, as it's sometimes called. They weren't really sure um, what the virus was or why, for example, schools had to be closed or why we were being asked to stay at home. So I'll talk through some of the issues relating to coronavirus now. Hopefully this will be a help to you. And some of the things that we'll say at the end will be things that you will remember because they're very, very helpful. First of all, coronavirus is a name for the particular virus that we've got right now. There are lots of viruses. Flu, for example, is one, um, and they spread from human to human, either through contact, perhaps a person might touch something that's got a little coronavirus, a little bit of coronavirus on it, um, or they may breathe it in because it can pass through the air in little droplets. It's called coronavirus because it's round and it's got little tentacles that look a bit like a crown on it. Um, you might have seen pictures of this. Coronavirus has a very particular a look about it, and there have been lots of coronaviruses um, over the years. This one is called COVID-19. Now, why do we need to worry about it? We need to worry about it because it can make some people sick. Not everybody. Quite a lot of people don't get sick at all. In fact, some people don't even really know they've got it. But it can pass from person to person, and it makes some people very sick. So we can do lots of things to try and prevent coronavirus from spreading. But first of all, let's just think about the virus itself. Viruses are a bit strange. They don't eat things. They don't poop. They don't do lots of the things that living creatures do. They survive by spreading from person to person or creature to creature and attaching themselves to those people and perhaps moving into somewhere like the person's lungs or inside them. And then, of course, they can spread if a person coughs or sneezes to another person. We can stop coronavirus if we do certain things to help. First of all, how does it get into our body? It can get into our body through our mouth, through our nose, through our eyes. For example, if we're rubbing our eyes and we've touched something with a little bit of coronavirus on it just before. Normally speaking, our bodies do really well. They fight against things that get inside our body and we have an immune system, special cells that attack a virus. But because coronavirus is a bit new, our bodies are a little confused. They don't quite know what to do. We need to help our bodies and I'll talk about how we're helping people's bodies in a moment. So, some people get sick, some people just have the virus and they don't even know they've got it, and then it might spread from person to person. Children generally don't really even know they've got it. Some children might have a little bit of an illness, but they don't know. But one of the reasons that schools are closed at the moment is that we don't want the virus to spread from child to child and then perhaps to grandma and grandpa or to our parents. Because it might be that somebody else, especially if that person isn't particularly well in the first place, but their bodies really struggle when coronavirus comes into their bodies. But we're helping those people because we're staying at home, schools are closed, and we're remembering some things. We'll talk about those things in a second, but also because the government has used lots of money to buy vaccines. Vaccines are special injections that people can have that help their bodies to fight against coronavirus by stopping the coronavirus from being able to stick to our bodies. And then it goes away. But there's other ways we can help it to go away. And that is by washing our hands regularly using soap, by using sanitizer, by keeping a little bit of distance between each other 
and if we're in a very crowded space, wearing a face covering in order that it helps us not to breathe in any coronavirus that might be in the air, little droplets that are in the air. So through the vaccines and through us being incredibly sensible, we're hoping that we can defeat the virus. It will eventually not be so prevalent, that means there won't be so much of it, because it won't be able to spread. It will probably be there for quite some time, but through vaccines and through being sensible and through making sure that we remember the golden rules, we will be able to defeat it. And that's what we're doing right now. There's no great need for you as children to worry about it unduly, but it is really important that we remember the ways that we try and stop it spreading. So let's remember those rules, let's do the best that we can to help the government at this time. Now, we have a very special video for you. So wasn't that fantastic? Year two having a great time there, both at home and at school. We're going to have a prayer in a second, and then after that prayer, we're going to finish with a very special video telling you about something that will be happening after we come back from half term. First of all, let's have our prayer. Lord God, please watch over us and guide us each and every day. Help us to do the right things to help our community and to help each other at this time of coronavirus. If we all do the things that we know we should do, we can help our community and help those who are poorly to get better, to our doctors and nurses working incredibly hard. Please watch over us and guide us each and every day. Amen. So just after half term, we have a very special day, our World Book Day. Of course, this week, we've got several things to look forward to. We've got Ted Hill joining us, the Worcester Warriors captain. We've also got our very, very special day on Friday when we celebrate Valentine's and Juve Day all in one. But we're going to be looking forward to what's happening after half term now. This is just to help you with a bit of information for that. We've got Chloe, first of all, who has a very special song for us. And after Chloe's song, a little bit about World Book Day before we finish for today, because we've got KH Radio afterwards. I hope you have a lovely day. I look forward to being part of your day on a Friday on a very special duvet day. Be good. Have a lovely day. Enjoy these two little videos. Enjoy Kate's radio. Bye for now. You can use binoculars. You can use your eyes. You can use your nose and ears. What do you suppose you find? Animals. Animals great and small. Animals. Animals. All of them wonder how they but some have fur, some have scaly skin, some have cells or camouflage, some will bite or sting. Ow. Animals, animals, animals great and small, animals, animals, all of them wonderful. Some have whiskers, some have tails, some have legs or fins. Some have bottoms, some have feet, some have horns or wings. Animals, animals, animals great and small. Animals, animal, animals, all of them wonderful. They to swim the sea, some hide underground, some just hang around the sea. In trees, some cannot be found. Animals, animals. Animals great and small, animals, animals, all of them wonderful. Animals, animals great and small, animals, animals, all of them wonderful. <laughs>